it's um, not the same without Ravenwing. Um, he was, you know, I grew so attached to him that actually, you know, I wasn't ready. When he did pass, I didn't, it literally, I, I didn't even see any signs of feather or something took him. He was getting so slow, which I'll talk about in a bit later, but I thought I had a wee bit more time with him. And while I spent some time to say goodbye, I feel like I was robbed a bit, you know, um, which is partly my fault. I should have known that, that as slow as he was getting, something would take him. But um, like I said in the other video, he was the heart and soul of the founding spirit of this entire farm. So it's a bittersweet um, update, I guess. To take a uh, moment of a break from, you know, my normal vlogging and talk a bit about the day job. Um, because it's got a bit of a surprise. First off, that's our new rooster, Patch. He's way over there. He's a bit flighty, so that's probably the last you'll see of him. Because he never, never stands still. Second off, we've got um, migratory kestrels that are a pain in the ass. You know, they're the only bird of prey I know of that um, is this aggressive. They'll even kill other birds of prey and take their nest over, you know, permanently take their, their nest over. And you can see that the chickens, you know, um, are responding to, it's nowhere near dusk, and they're responding to the kestrels by only leaving their um, safety of their coop when they want to eat a drink. Now, normally they would have 10 acres to play around in and they would, you know, the, the very first thing they'd want to do is leave the coop. And they would stay out as long as they possibly could until the sun comes down. Well, sun's nowhere near going down and they're just kind of all, you know, they, they go, they, they come out for a bit, then they come back. Then they go out, then they come back. And that's not normal behaviour. It means they're scared. Well, there's a flash of patch. There he goes. And now he's gone. They keep muddying up the place because they spend more time in here and I have to keep cleaning up after him. It's just not ideal. The kestrels have taken uh, probably uh, almost 10 of our um, various laying hens and or roosters. And very sadly we had a, a um, elderly rooster. He was the heart and soul and spirit. He's the founding, really the founding spirit of the entire farm. Um, I talked about before how the farm's pagan run. Well, he, um, you know, they're given, you know, respect and dignity and, you know, basically primarily just for eggs and, you know, never go, ever go to butcher unless they're mean. Well, um, We've got a lot of elderly chickens because of that. They're very elderly, you know. Um, normally people, Abrahamics especially, would, you know, run their farm by culling them when they stop laying or when they're no longer fertile, when they're roosters, when they're no longer fertile. Ravenwing, he was infertile uh, probably two years ago, maybe three. And then he just kind of got slower and slower. And um, I knew it was about his time when he started spending a lot of time on the porch and... I knew that it was soon, I just didn't know it was that soon. I believe a kestrel or something um, carried him off because maybe it was something bigger, I don't know. But it was, it, was, it was something during the time of the migratory kestrels. So, you know, kestrels probably what happened to him because I didn't see any evidence he was a, a bantam. So, yeah, that those, those can, bantams can be a lot easier for something like a kestrel to carry off and if not carry off at least drag you know into wood into the woodlands or something i'm not saying that's what did it i'm saying you know he's here one day and he's gone the next and he was so slow he had arthritis and he he could he could run about but he was getting to the point where he was choosing to stay still he was choosing to be less mobile and you know, when they start coming to you for comfort, especially, you start wondering, 
why are they not going to their flock? Why are they coming to me? You know, um, they're, they're trying to tell you something. And he was trying to tell me that it was his time. And I knew, I just, I just thought he, he'd lived so long. You know, I just thought that you know, he'd, he'd been through so many seasons of predators coming and going and he'd had so much good luck. And I thought, you know, maybe he would just kind of die of old age but it ended up being that before he got real bad off which I guess is a blessing in disguise before he got real bad off something took him we had one main rooster that is no longer here that we did have to cull and so now it's just Patch and he's got everybody to himself really uh, for the time being and he may for, for quite a while um, basically the um, what we call the quaviary is, is about the same um, nothing really has changed there. They've got a roof ahead, so they've been spared from the kestrels. But for chickens, they're so big, and to be free range, they really need, you know, more space than you can make an aviary out of. So that's Patch again. Well, that's, that's nice, Patch. Usually, you're running around so so often, running around that I can't even have two seconds of you on film. Well, that's very nice. You 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 um must know that something's going on, eh? Yeah? You craving attention? He's a sweetheart. He really is. He's actually the son of the one that was really mean, but he's he turned out to be really nice. I think he's going to make a great rooster, I really do. So we're going to go now and check on the um, newborn chicks that just hatched overnight. Most of them hatched overnight. One hatched Wednesday. And they are Easter egg or um, mutts. So everything that you see here, let's uh, zoom out a bit. Everything that you see here, you see all the crazy different kinds of chickens. I mean, we probably got 15 plus different kinds of chickens running around everywhere. And so they're, they're um, some of them could be EEs, uh, pure, but most of them are going to be mutts. And I, I honestly think that mutts are some of the make some of the cutest little things. Really, I do. I'm a big fan of the mutt chicken. Right there could be, potentially could be Raven Wing's last daughter. Uh, not for sure, but it's hids. But that's a mutt. That's a silky cross. Um, so that's one of our little cute mutts. We haven't had much opportunity to hatch our own. We've been mostly adopting from hatcheries. Sometimes ordering stuff on purpose, but mostly adopting. Really, it's just been the first year that we've been able to patch out some of our own. Um, patch, patch is a, I'm pretty sure Patch is a, is a mutt as well. I'm just not sure what he's mixed with. Here comes Belle. Belle's one of our newer adopted ones. She's just a, you know, general regular white rock chicken. But, um, and of course we've got Raven, which is another adopted one. Really, half of these are adopted. Hatcheries do the best, that if they don't sell something, the last thing they want it to do is just to be, you know, uh, those chicks just to not have a home and go, who knows where, dog food, I don't know. So what they try to do is they try to adopt out and um, really, you know, it, it's uh, if you've got a nice reputable hatchery. And so, um, you know, if you're looking for something in particular and you need something in particular, um, you know, I get that, but adopt when you can. Anytime you can, you know. But I want to know what would have happened to them if no one else did, you know. And what's the fate of the other ones that weren't as lucky, I don't know. I don't want to think about it, really. I will say it's not a farm without a brummer. So, yeah, we've got, we have to have some of them. So, I, I am guilty, guilty as charged. I did I get them on purpose. Gusty, though, she's a brummer and she was on accident. She's actually a hen that, um, she wasn't broody, but she ended up... Um, two different uh, batches she ended up raising. Um, she didn't always do it, but um, ended up mothering them like she was broody, but she really just, what she did was adopted them. She never actually went broody, which is very interesting. We'll probably never have another one like Dusty. And I think she did that because um, when she was really young, everyone got eaten. Uh, everyone in her, her um, clutch got eaten, and so she was the only baby left in the flock and I think she just remembers that and she watches out for the little ones because of that. 
Okay, I've got on to the babies. Let's let's go ahead and I know that people probably get bored of this, so we're gonna we go out on to the babies that were born last night and the day prior. We've already taken them out of the incubator and put them in. They dried off already to so put them in the shed. Honestly, it's about time to check on them anyway. All right. So we got ten. Um, ten that successfully hatched out. One that um, he always seems like he always had one that uh, doesn't make it. That's a dad that you know. Um, but we got ten really nice ones and. They're all different shapes and sizes, and that one, I don't know why that one <laughs> wants to be, wants to fall asleep in the wrong place, but uh, there it goes. Now, now they're all back together. It's amazing when you, and I cannot underscore this enough really, because if you haven't gone through the experience, you don't understand fully. But it's amazing when you just take eggs they're just eggs, you know, and nearly a month later, they end up being, well, 21 days to be exact, they end up being actual living things, fluffy little living things, you know, just, it, it, it um, blows my mind. <laughs> like, scientifically, it's very, you know, common sense, but it's just every time I never get sold, especially when you're hatching out your own. Like these are all our own. You never know what's going to pop out. It's always a mystery. And they're way too adorable for their own good. <laughs> I will say. Um, you fall in love with them really quickly. This is what brings me joy. That really any of them. Adults or babies really. Caring for them. You know, knowing that they wouldn't even exist without your help. And feeling like you actually are. You know useful for something and having something look at you with without judgment you know that's kind of what I live for I live for those moments because those moments get me by and let me carry on and focus on what really matters and not worry about the other stuff as much all the shit that goes on you know you just kind of you just kind of forget when you're with them you forget all of that I mean, it's still there in the back of your mind, but you you basically forget all the bad stuff, and you just have a moment where nobody's nobody's judging you, nobody's trying to hurt you, nobody's hating you, and they just kind of accept you. Especially something that I cannot tame because if I tamed it, it would be too vulnerable to predators. It would be too trusting to predators. So I can't tame them. I can't baby them because they have to still have that flight instinct i wish i could and even then you know when they become adults you realize just how accepting they are of you despite the fact that you really all you've done is give them what they needed to survive a little tlc but for the most part you just kind of left them be and they just instinctively accept you i find that fascinating i wish wish humans were like that Hopefully we'll be able to raise these up in the times where the kestrels have already left for the season and they'll have the best chance of making it to adulthood. Because by the time these guys are big enough to even go out in the paddock, the kestrels should be long gone by then. Of course we'll have other predators, but really they don't bother them that much. It's just those migratory kestrels that are just out of control. Guys are way too adorable. You really are. It's like watching a fire, you know. It's almost like watching a fire. It's like you get <laughs> you get mesmerized by the cuteness instead of being mesmerized by fire. You get you get mesmerized by all the cuteness. The way they fall asleep too with the light. They get really warm under the light and they relax and just fall asleep and they start head bobbing. Some of them even like will fall down on accident. It's hilarious. I could stay here for hours, but I gotta get going. So bye bye for now, little ones. <laughs>